In this lecture, we're going to introduce the idea of digital music. We're going to understand how different frequencies can be produced on the onboard speaker on your QL200 trainer kit. Digital music has really emerged as the prevalent standard for distribution of modern day music. So a few decades ago, people typically bought vinyl records. That was the industry standard for producing music and that was an analog method of recording. We shifted over to the 8-track and the cassette, still using some analog representation in there. Then the compact disc emerged and we started storing music digitally on optical media. Nowadays, people download digital music through things like the iTunes store or other online uh, trading sites or, or download sites and they're stored in various formats such as the MP3 format or other digital compression standards. Most of you probably carry a system that can process digital audio daily whether that happens to be an iPod or another MP3 player or simply your smartphones that have music playing capability. And these systems are microprocessor driven. A microprocessor is able to take data stored in a digital music file and understanding the compression algorithm that is used, that microprocessor is able to make sense of the information that is stored in a digital music file and then can turn that into the sounds that we like in our favorite songs. Before you watch the rest of this video, I would like you to watch this other YouTube video that I have posted to the Blackboard site. This will introduce you to the idea of music and the idea of music being created out of waveforms. So please take a moment to watch that video before you come back and watch this. I would like you to understand the idea of how music is notated and how it corresponds to different frequencies. I have posted another link which you see copied below here. This is linked on our Blackboard site as well and what it showcases are the frequencies that are associated with the different musical notes. This happens to be how music is represented in a musical score. So if you were to play an instrument or to sing a part in a choir you would see a musical staff very similar to this this happens to be in the treble clef, that's what this is used to symbolize. Treble is used for our higher pitched instruments such as violins, flutes, piccolos, and it is also the staff where higher voices sing. Typically women's soprano and alto voices, voice parts are in the treble clef. If you play another instrument that may be lower such as a tuba, something like that, you may see your music in the bass clef and so the bass clef happens to be just a little bit below the treble clef in this case treble clef starts right here at this note which is C4 also known as middle C it's called the middle C because if you had a keyboard such as a piano that note would be right there in the middle and that is typically in the middle if you're playing piano with your left and right hand that is the note right in the middle your right hand would play the treble parts and your left hand would play the bass parts and so that middle C would be right there in the middle between your two hands. As you progress up the scale notes go up by one letter at a time. So here we have C, this happens to be D on the next space, this happens to be E on the next line, then F on the next space, G on the next line, A on the next space, so lines and spaces represent different full notes. You'll also notice we have this funny thing that looks like a pound sign or a hashtag. That is the sharp symbol and that indicates a note that is halfway between your two different notes on different lines. So this sharp before this note here indicates C sharp which would be a half step between C4 and the D note right above it. And so this shows a progression from C all the way up to a higher C and you will notice that C5 which is the next C up here is at exactly twice the frequency of C4. If you look at this website you'll be able to see all of the frequencies of the different notes here and other notes that you may see on a keyboard or played by instruments. So the music that we actually listen to is the combination of several notes 
being played at once. So if you hear a piano part, oftentimes there are notes being played by the right hand, notes being played by the left hand. You may have several fingers down to play multiple notes at the same time on both hands. If you hear an orchestra playing, you're often hearing the cellos play one note, you're hearing the violas play another note, and then first and second violins are often playing independent parts. Or you may have in a bigger orchestra a trumpet section, and you may have first and second trumpets, third trumpets, playing different brass parts and horns and percussion. And so there's lots of different notes happening all at the same time. We're going to learn about how to create one single note, which could be part of a multi-note musical selection. And so most instruments can only play one note at a time. If you have a trumpet, you can only play one note at a time. You can go the next time, you can go through and play a higher note, then you can play a higher note or a lower note. But at any given moment in time, a trumpet can only play one single note. The same thing with a flute, the same thing with multiple other brass and woodwind instruments. Strings can sometimes play more than one instrument or more than one note at a time if you take the bow and you happen to cross two strings at the same time with the bow. But music is a way of combining different instruments' tones into a pleasant tone for the ear to hear. What digital music does it is, is it actually takes samples from two or more locations. Two locations will allow you to create sound. So it will often place a microphone to the left and a microphone to the right of the performers and then that way you get a left ear sound and a right ear sound. If you have what's called surround sound or Dolby Digital surround sound, what that's doing is often placing a microphone in multiple locations. So for surround sound, you might have a microphone at the front right and the back right, the front left and the back right. You might have something in the middle, you might have something in the back, um, and you might even have separate speakers to handle just those uh, bass notes for your subwoofer, those types of things. And so they're picking up the locations of interest and the notes of interest. And in lab this week, what you're going to do is produce a simple mono sound. Mono, like monotone, indicates that you're just going to be playing one single note at a time. And then in the next time interval, you'll be playing a different note, a different note, a different note so that you will learn to play a simple child song on your QL200 trainer kit. So how do we create sound? Well, just as you learned in the other video that you watched, typically a sine wave is used to create sound. In this case, we cannot easily produce a sine wave with our microcontroller, but what we can do is produce a square wave. And a square wave will be produced by setting a bit, and then delaying for a while, and then clearing that bit and repeating that pattern over and over again to generate a tone, just like the tuning fork did in the video that you previously viewed. So let's go back to our example of an A440. When an orchestra tunes up their instruments, the concert master, who's typically this first chair violinist right here, will typically stand up and come out before the conductor, perhaps stand on the little podium, and play the note that is on his or her A string. And so then everybody else in the orchestra says, okay, that's the standard 440 hertz. Let me make sure my instrument is tuned to that A440. And then off, everybody's on the same page. And so what 400 A440 means is that that particular wave oscillates 440 times per second. So it has a frequency of 440 hertz. So if you were to have a microphone and pick up someone playing A440, it would look just like a sine wave with a frequency of 440 hertz. So how can you create that on your QL200 trainer kit? Well, the speaker that we have on board is connected to port RC2. So you cannot use the keypad at the same time you're using your digital music. So you're going to have to make sure your keypad is turned off because remember that uses port C. There's also another switch right near your speaker which you will need to turn on so that that is connected to port C bit 2. Then you're going to have to create a square wave and so you're going to set RC2, you're going to delay for half of the period, then you're going to clear RC2 and then also delay for half of the period. And so that way you're going to create a nice 50% duty cycle square wave such that you're on for half the time in the period and you're off for half the time in the period. So let's do a little bit of math. 
if you want to oscillate 440 times per second, then each period has to be 1 over 440 hertz, which works out to be 2,273 microseconds. And so if we want one period, which is going to be setting, delaying, clearing, and delaying for the same amount of time to take 2,273 microseconds, what we can do is we can set, we can delay for approximately half of that period, we can clear, and then we can delay. You'll notice that I'm a little bit less than half of this with my delay. Well, why am I doing that? Because it will take one microsecond for me to do this setting. It will take me one microsecond to do this clearing. And so in this case, I've got, I can take away two microseconds for the setting and the clearing. So that gives me 2,271. Divide that by two, I get 1135 microseconds. Really, there's going to be a little bit of time accounted for in the go-to, so I could have even gone one less, but you want to go a little bit short on there so that with it, the overhead of that delay loop, you're still going to have one period be approximately 2,273 microseconds. So this particular wave, if we just set, delay, clear, delay, will only last one 440th of a second. And for us to really hear that note, it's gonna to need to last more than 400, one 440th of a second. So if we wanted that to last for a full second, we would just need 440 such times. And we can use a for loop to make that happen. Here's an example of how that would work. So if we had a for loop, we can have some counter i, and we want 440 of these particular cycles. So we're going to initialize our loop at zero, and every time through the loop, we're going to increment i by one. So that's what this i plus plus is. It says i equals i plus one. And so long as we're less than 440, we're gonna keep going through this. And this is what the loop does. It sets RC2 equal to one. Then it waits for the number of microseconds that we specify. This is using one of those built-in macros we learned about in one of the previous video lectures you were to watch for today. Then we're gonna clear RC2 then we're gonna delay for the same amount of time. And so we just keep doing this. 440 here would be how we would make it last for one second. And what would we put there if we wanted it to last for two seconds? That's right, 880, you would just double it. If you wanted it to last for only half a second, what would you do? Just divide it by two, put 220 there. So here's a function that I have created, which will allow you to specify a duration in seconds for this particular um, note to last. So in this case, I'm passing my duration in, and that is a double. So I could say 1.5 seconds, I could say 0.75 seconds, I could say two seconds or one second. And in this case, I have my for loop, and here I'm multiplying 440 by my duration. So if I wanted it to be half a second, it would multiply by 0.5. If I wanted it to be two seconds, it would multiply it by two, and that's just going to determine how many cycles I'm gonna take through this. In the lab this week, you're going to have to create a function for each of the notes that you are going to want to play, and then you will call them in order so that you will play a simple children's song. So we wanna develop functions for each of those notes. So you will have to look up the frequency of each of those notes and figure out what the time delay would have to be. And so in class, you're going to work on developing each of those frequencies. When you get into lab, you're going to use your oscilloscope to check each of those frequencies to make sure that they are being played at the proper frequency. And then you're going to put them together to develop a uh, set of code that will play a familiar song. So here's the familiar song we're going to be working with. This is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The nice thing here is it has no sharps or flats in there. So you can just look up C, G, A. One thing to note, these notes that are hollow like this are half notes. They last twice as long as these notes that are solid. So this G, this D, this G, and this C, D, and C will need to last twice as long as the other notes. In order to repeat notes like this, what you will want to do is add another subroutine, which will also be a brief period of silence between notes. So just like somebody playing 
let's say a clarinet would stop and take a breath or just stop the flow of air between repeated notes or somebody playing a violin would stop and move the bow back the other way um, you're going to have to create a little bit of silence so that it doesn't just sound like one long note when you put it together. We'll talk more about that when we get into the lab this week.